to the page for youtube channel i am page so in this video i'll be interviewing lance barnes mr barnes is a fourth year medical student in guyana and i hope that you guys enjoy this video i hope that you learn something from it especially if you're interested in studying abroad and remember to like comment share and subscribe Hi everyone, welcome to the Page for a YouTube channel. I am Paige. So today I'm joined by Lance Barnes. Mr. Barnes is a Jamaican national currently in the fourth year of medical school in Guyana. Mr. Barnes, welcome. Thank you, thank you. I'm glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Mr. Barnes, tell tell the viewers a little bit a more little bit more about yourself. All right, so who is Lance Barnes? As you rightfully said, he is a medical student. Um, actually, just that news that I'm about to start clinical rotations in two weeks. Um, not only that, I'm also a writer and slash poet by hobby. Um, I'm also, uh, I would like to say, humanitarian at heart. Because I just love to give back and to do all things. I love to do all of the things. Just human. Yes. Okay, so um, why medicine out of all? Actually, funny story, I never wanted to do medicine. I never did. It was never my first choice. Uh, my first choice was actually art and creativity. I actually wanted to do music a very, very long time ago. Um, I presented that option to my mother and my mom was like, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Gets the career. And then to be honest, I've always wanted to heal and inspire and just reach and touch lives. So to be honest, medicine was the only thing that really fit. Um, it's ironic because my parents always said that they, from they saw me they, and how I act and how I move, they just felt as though, okay, this one's going to be a doctor. Okay. So Anna chose me, to be honest. There are medical schools in Jamaica and other places, but why did you choose Guyana? Well, <laughs> first off, the bad is definitely financial reasons because, you know, med school in the U.S. is actually it's very, very expensive. And not only that, but I never really saw myself doing tertiary education in Jamaica, to be honest. I asked my mom, my brother, anybody. I never wanted to stay there. Um, so for me, I just wanted to explore different cultures, travel to different places, and just to have different outlooks and new experiences and kind of step outside of the shadow of... Because when I'm in Jamaica, I'm in the shadow of my parents and my family. I'm always this person's son, this person's brother, this person's cousin. I want to step outside of that and be Lance Barnes himself. How was the transition from high school in Jamaica to university in Guyana? Um, it was, well, to be honest, my high school journey was definitely a pilgrimage. That's one. But, but um, I went to boarding school in Jamaica, so I went to Mono College. So it was never, being there, I was kind of on my own already, in a sense. So I had to adapt to living away from my parents for extended periods of time and doing things by myself and figuring situations out on my own. So it was never really a hard transition because I was kind of used to living one on a dorm and two living away. So I guess the biggest transition was mostly like culture-wise and different being in a different country. But on that note, it's I'd always say that it's very similar to Jamaica, but very different because Diana is also a part of the Caribbean. So naturally, there's, there's some similarities. It's just, um, I guess, their dialect. It took me a bit of time to really understand and uh, just the food. But there's also ways to get Jamaican food or uh, Caribbean food. Or food here. So it wasn't so much of a culture shock for me. All right, so tell me a little bit more about your program. What's the length of the program? The courses you do per semester? Well, the name of the school is Texala American University. So um, 
my program is the BSMD, that's your Bachelor's of Science, Doctor of Medicine program. Um, there are different, for me, my program is five and a half years. I came here and I did pre-medicine as well. And then I transitioned into MD, that is medical school technically. Um, but there were options of coming, for example, for persons who applied with their CAPE results, they had the option of doing four and a half years instead of five and a half. The courses that I do, it varies. So like pre-medicine courses are different. They're like, they're like basic, basic, basic science courses. So like your chemistry, your biology, um, of course, English, communication skills, um, medical terminology. Um, that's when you're starting to transition into med the medical school. That medical terminology, your interested by anatomy, um, Spanish medical terminology as well. And of course, you have your anatomy, your biochem, your, uh, you also have a thing called community medicine. We also have something called integrated clinical, clinical case-based module, we call it ICCDM. That's where like, the, te the teachers would give you like cases and you would have to solve the cases. So for example, if you're doing anatomy, you have to get, they're given an anatomy case or a case around it by anatomy and you have to solve it and answer questions around it. Um, then you have your pathology, your microbiology, which was definitely a challenge for me. Um, the physiology and my personal favorite, pharmacology. So yeah, pharmacology and pathology are my two favorite courses. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I'm currently doing pharmacology and it's, it's really rough, it's really hard. <laughs> To remember all the jokes and all that. I mean, the trick is not necessarily remembering all of them, it's just remembering the classes. As long as you remember the classes and you remember one, you can remember all. I can give you some more pointers afterwards, don't worry. Okay. So you mentioned um, the reason why you went to Ghana is because of the cost. So could you tell me a little bit more about the tuition, what's the tuition like, accommodation, food? What's the cost like for those stuff? Oh, okay. Um, well, for me, I am paying, uh, I think it is 7,000 US, yeah, around 7,000 USD per year. Um, so, yeah, and I am currently on a house scholarship. The school does offer um, a house scholarship to especially Caribbean students. Um, the criteria back then was, for me, it was grades as well as, as I said, Caribbean students and among some other things. I'm not sure what the criteria is now or if it's the same, but I know that there was a bit of few changes since I last applied in 2017, but I don't think it's a drastic change. So as it relates to that, um, they also offer payment plans and stuff so you can pay, for example, every three months, every six months, mm -hmm. every month, I believe as well, for your tuition. And, they will work together with you. Cost of living, Jamaican currency is stronger than Guyanese currency. So cost of living is not that, that, that harsh for me, being a Jamaican. And my parents are making money, of course. So there's that. Um, grocery for me, I'm at every month nowadays, it's probably, let me give you an USD, it's probably like 150, 160 USD per month. For grocery for me. And transportation, there's taxis, just like you have Uber now in Jamaica, there are taxi services that you can call. Uh, there is the bus, of course. And the students have their own people, but that's most likely for the guy in this series. Um, yeah, it's kind of, I would say it's affordable here. What are some challenges that you face being away from your parents and your families? since you've been in Ghana? Definitely the food. I miss my mother cooking. <laughs> I miss my mother cooking. I mm -hmm. miss not having to cook for myself. <laughs> I miss that. Um, but aside from that, on a more personal note, there are definitely times when I wish I had my mom and my younger brother with me because they're two biggest parts in my support system. Yeah. So... 
where I never like I feel down, I feel like I can't do it anymore. I feel like I want to drop out, which has happened to me a lot of times. Um, there are times when I wish that they would be able to just sit me down and talk with me, but I guess that's a part of the process where you have to learn to stand on your own two feet sometimes. So, so I would say that would be the biggest challenge for me. Just the support. And what, what advice would you give to someone who's abroad and they're facing the same issue being away from your parents? <laughs> <and all that? laughs> Support, to find it. Um, for me, I'm, I've kind of created a surrogate family over here. So I have some friends, you know, some friends who have become family after a certain time. Um, those organic and authentic friendships. Um, and not only that, but you can, you would have to do things that make you feel like you're at home, you know? So go places that feel like home or remind you of home. Listen to music that reminds you of home or motivates you. Kind of develop that, get yourself into that rhythm that kind of allows you to push you or kick yourself forward. For me, one of the things that I did was um, I started this gratitude jar. So I had this old jar. Actually, I have it right here. This jar, right? And I fold up some sticky notes and I write some notes on it. For example, stuff that say, um, relax, breathe, or uh, little quotes. Um, and I hang them up or post them up or apartment just to kind of keep me going and look at them and glance at them. And it just kind of refuels you in a way. But aside from that, the main thing for me is that you have support because I could continue without support. Even if it's on the phone, friends here, you definitely need to build a support system and breathe. You mentioned friends in Guyana. What are the people like? What's the culture like in Guyana? Well, as I said, it's somewhat similar to Jamaica, but the mm -hmm. people here are... I don't want to say this. I don't want to say anything from it. None of my guy needs some company. They're definitely peculiar. <laughs> but they are um, good at heart. At heart, yeah. Um, they're very, well, the ones that I've met so far are very welcoming. So they would definitely be kind to you. They're not, just like anybody, they're not mean to you unless you know you come with them or something and they are full of a lot of life them love they celebrate everything this place has so many holidays there's so i think Guyana is the caribbean country i think that was a fact actually with um the most holidays i would have to fact check that until they have a lot of holidays in this country so they celebrate a lot of things yeah they're very high spirited i would say that Uh, what's one thing you wish you knew before going to medical school in Guyana and one thing you know no, you, you knew before going to Guyana? One thing I wish I knew before, one thing I knew before? Yes. All right, one, all right, let me start with the easy one. Though. One thing that I knew before was definitely that this would have been the time for me to prove myself. This mm -hmm. was uh, definitely going to be the time for me to make all of my dreams come true for me and to really hold myself accountable and um, excel. I just knew that this was the time. That's what I knew. This was your time. You go here, make your way, and blaze a trail and create your own legacy. Um, one thing I wish I knew before I came here was it is going to be a lot lonelier. <laughs> it is going to be a lot lonelier. It is going to be very challenging and you're going to have to pull yourself together a lot. I wish I knew that. You're going to have to pull yourself together a lot. Because all you have is you over here. Remember you have no family, no parents, no friends. I came here literally alone. So, yeah. If 
I'm interested in going to Guyana, medical school in Guyana. What's one advice that you'd give to me? Be okay with standing on your own. <laughs> be okay with being yourself as well. Mm-hmm. And develop an internal motivation that cannot be given. Remember why you started. And anytime you lose faith, just pray. You may feel lost some of the times, but whenever that happens, I will always, always say, go back to the basics. So go back to when you started, go back to how you felt when you started, go back mm-hmm. to the things you used to do when you started, go back to the things, even childhood, as far as far back as that, go back to the things that made you feel good, that motivated you, and just keep your head up. No matter what is going on, keep your head up, because... You can do it. You're here for a reason. You have a purpose. And even though it's challenging right now, or it may get challenging, it's challenging for a reason. Not every storm was meant to break you, some were meant to build you. So, my advice would be keep your head up and keep going. Thank you guys for joining me. Thank you guys for watching. A special thanks to Mr. Barnes. I'll leave links down below to Mr. Barnes' social media just in case you guys would like to contact him, you would like to ask him further questions, you'd like to follow him. Please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Until next time, bye!